and tonight, joining me here in ABC Studios, high above Madison Square Garden, is none other than Jeffrey Hazlett, primetime TV and radio host and CEO of the Hazlett Group. Mr. Hazlett is the primetime television host of C-Suite with Jeffrey Hazlett and Executive Perspectives on C-Suite TV and business radio host of All Business with Jeffrey Hazlett on the CBS On Demand Radio Network. Mr. Hazlett is a global business celebrity speaker and best-selling author. And just this past month, he released his new bestseller, Think Big, Act Bigger. And we're going to be talking about a lot about that during the show. With that intro, we give a very warm welcome to Jeffrey Hazlett. Hey, it's good to be here. I, you know, I wanted to, when you were talking about your name, even if we spell it wrong, it could be right. You know, that's what <laughs> I, I, I love about that piece of it. You know? And then, then the way you introduced it, in high above Madison Square Gardens. I mean, that's freaking awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> well, it's very, very exciting to have you in the studio. I mean, really, it's uh, the roles are reversed here. I mean, someone of your stature, and I'm interviewing you, this is a, no, a it's, dream. It's cool. Well, it's very nice of you to say that. I'm just a guy True. from South Dakota who's trying to make a living. That's the way I like to describe <laughs> it. But uh, Well, I'm so honored you joined us and before we get into the actual interview i'm pulling out an artifact from my pocket how oh my god how do we explain this to a millennial here i have this kid really yeah, here pesach it's, you know a, ro- it's a roll of film uh, that's a roll of film you guys you, you know, know what this is yeah i know what it is but yeah. but how? just barely that's well, a, that, i know how to process uh, this. that's a product that actually you know kodak went bankrupt last year i left there about uh, almost <laughs> six years ago now because mm-hmm. they forgot what they were doing they said hey we're a film company they were never a film company and they had the only product that people would actually run back into a burning building to save so they made emotional technology, and that's where they went wrong, quite frankly, was a number of years ago, decades ago, thinking that they were just in the film business, and they were never in the film business. And so, therefore, they passed on the digital camera. They invented it. They had the patents on right. it. They, they, they created it. It was invented by a guy named Steve Sasson, set in a room in 1975, and he created the very first digital camera. Now let's move to your book. I'm plowing through it, almost done. Uh, this book, folks, is the real thing. If you haven't ordered it yet, order it now. I'd put it this way: if you want a legal adrenaline rush, yeah. this is the book. Uh, it's, yeah, I like the way. Oh, we got to write. We gotta, I want to use that that's as my, a quote. I, I, when I that read down. it, and that's why I love that I, because I got a legal adrenaline rush. I read the book, so I understand the title. Yeah, well, and it's a great title. Yeah. But maybe you could just explain it to our audience. Look, I, I'm a big guy, and and you know, I, the first time I looked at myself in a picture, I didn't think I was that big. I still don't think I'm a big guy. But then I started looking at myself in pictures, and I started saying, "Whoa, my gosh, I'm a big guy!" And I started evaluating that. Why didn't I think I was a big person? I'm six foot three, two hundred, you know, some odd pounds, and I, ne- you know, I played. I was a high school all American, all that kind of stuff. But I didn't ever think of myself as a big guy, and so that just kind of perplexed me. And then I started thinking about my business and the way I was doing things. And I said, you know, I was doing things in. South Dakota. I'm in a place where most people only know as a spot on a map. And yet I've gone and risen to some of the biggest places in the world. And and that's where really what this book's about. It's about you being whatever you want to be. Whether it's in your personal life or your business, you can act bigger. And if you want your dreams to come true, quit waiting for it. If you start doing, your dreams catch up to you. They become reality. And that's really what you have to start to do when you think about your life and the business and the way in which you represent yourself. It's about, you know, getting the rewards of being relentless. Because I've found that it's not the lucky who win, but it's the relentless. It's the people that do their job day in and day out. And people say, well, Jeff, that's hard. Well, you know what? Yeah, it's supposed to be called hard work because right. it is hard. It is yeah, hard, man. You got it's, it's the name of the game. And, and if you work hard, you get, you get, you, you, you win. And that's what it's all about, winning in the end. Not failing fast. Oh, see, now you wound me up. Now I'm going. I love it. You just, I love it. He just opens one chapter and boom, I'm gone. Yeah. Oh, failing fast. That's another thing I talk about since you got me on a mm-hmm. roll. People say fail fast. Forget fail fast. Win fast. Don't don't fail fast. Somebody said to me the other day, said, Jeff, what's your biggest failure? I said, I don't know. I haven't done it yet because I'm going to have more and more failures. I'm okay with that. But failures are just steps for me to get in the way of winning. And you have to keep your mind on the fact that you want to win, not that you want to fail fast. You want to win fast. This is great. We're speaking with Jeffrey Hazlett. Chapter 2, again, of the book Think Big, Act Bigger. You talk about being authentic, yeah. being true to yourself. Yep. Being true, and you talked about it a few moments ago. Being true to your family, your business peers. Why is this so important? Yeah, look, it's hard enough. You know, someone said. You know, I was wa- listening to a speaker talk the other day and said, "Well, how should you be genuine?" <laughs> what do you mean? What kind of question is that? How to be genuine? How, how do I represent myself as genuine? I said, "Look, it's hard enough being me. Why would I want to be somebody else?" <laughs> right. So, in 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 inside, you are who you are. And I think a lot of our problems in society and even in business, the reason why we don't do things or people play politics and people do the stuff they do in business is because of this little voice in their head. And I'm just saying, whatever you are, be it. Be it. Do it. Live it. Don't, Don't apologize for it. 
I am big. I am bold. I'm obnoxious. I'm loud. I'm aggressive. I'm, put whatever term you want. I don't care. You know what? I'm happy with me. And, and I'm going to be me. And if you don't like it, eh, like, you know, like one time I had somebody complain to me when I was at Kodak and I was a CMO and I, and I finally just wrote, bite me. And I tweeted it out. <laughs> and someone said, you shouldn't do that. And I said, why not? And they said, you got to be nicer. So then I retweeted. I put, please bite me. You know, <laughs> you know why? You know, that's what you should do. I mean, this is ridiculous that, you know, that we need more of that. Like think, tend to your own stuff. Let me tend to mine and let me be me. And if we, and if we spend more time about, you know, me being me and you being you, uh, what a better world it'd be, and then mm-hmm. how much more we can get done. Mm-hmm. Imagine that. Amazing. In the book, we talk about the Caitlin Rule mm-hmm. and the importance of empowering your team, your employees, to make their own decisions. Could you talk about the Caitlin Rule? I love the Caitlin Rule. It's first story in the book, um, and one of the best stories, true story. A gal working for me by the name of Caitlin came up to my desk uh, right before I was about to go and meet with the CEO of a company we're taking public. We take a couple companies public a year, and we were about to leave in about three to five minutes, and she stopped by my desk and said, Jeff, should we take color copies uh, to the meeting of the presentation? I said, Caitlin, I said, you're brand new here, so um, I'm going to cut you some slack. In fact, I'm going to create a new rule. It's going to be called the Caitlin Rule. It's named after you and your honor, and here's the deal. You only get to ask me 21 questions. You can ask me about the meaning of life. You can ask me, where's the best Italian restaurant in New York City? What's the best train to take cross town? You can ask me anything you want, personally, privately, whatever. Is that one of your 21 questions? And she turned back to me and said, I don't think so. I said, well, good, because that's a good career move, because if I have to answer that question, what do I need you for? And it wasn't to be mean or rude or mean or, you know, rough to her. It was to set conditions of Mm -hmm. satisfaction and say say to her, look, I think you already know the answer to that question, and you're wasting my time. You're you're a big dog. The name of our company uh, that we do this work with is called Tall Grass, which if you want to run with the big dogs, you've got to learn to pee in the tall grass. I said, Caitlin, I hired you because you're a superstar. You're a big dog, and big dogs know how to take care of things. Big dogs lead. That's what you should be doing. By the way, do you have time to make the color copies if I said yes? And she said, no. I said, never ask me a question like that again. You already know my job is to hit a mark in the business. Your job as the leader of your business is to do certain things. Each of us have a role to play. Play your role. And if I'm having to do your role, I'm not effective at my role. And so that's what the Caitlin rule is about, is having everyone do their jobs, having everyone know what the expectations are, and then what levels you need to exceed those jobs to be even better, to be a big dog. And that's what the Caitlin rule is all about. Hey, I got, I'm going to interrupt because I'm right now. This, is, okay. this is Hazlet. I'm taking over right now. This is I'm being hijacked. All you are, we're being hijacked. I'm this hijacked, and, there, and there's actually no weapons in the room. But yeah, I got to tell you guys, we follow the ratings. We follow what you're doing. I just heard that you guys are in the top ten. You just hit the top ten yeah, in the ratings. Really, yes, we did. It was, thank it you was for uh, male demographics, 25 and older. Uh, we're number nine, which is we're, on Nielsen. This yeah. is the this Nielsen, is, Nielsen, this I is official stuff. I mean, when you get you hear the Nielsen, which is great for you, great for the listeners. But you know, men, we're dominant with men. Let's get with the ladies too. We like the ladies as well. But to be able to do that in this time slot, you're beating music, right? Yes, we're definitely. We're we're we're, 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 you're we're bigger you. than Taylor <laughs> Swift. Great. You're bigger than what Fifty Cent. You, you guys are awesome. That's pretty good. I, look, I know Thank what you. that takes to do ratings. You know, I was the number one primetime business show, and I understand what that, that takes. Thank man. you. Good job. Thank you very much. Good job. Jeffrey. Chapter three talks about being pig-headed and irrational. Yeah. And Jeffrey, you said that when people call you that, it does not bother you. In fact, you think it's a compliment. Absolutely. And every business leader needs to be a little pig-headed. Yeah. You know, Talk you, you think about Steve Jobs. I mean. I know Steve. I knew Steve. Mm-hmm. You talking about one of the most big-headed guys you've ever seen. There's you know, a new movie out this, this week with him. And you get a chance to go see that because you're going to find out how pig-headed he was. I mean, sometimes in business you've got to stand for certain things. You've got to say, no, we're going to hit this level of profitability. We're going to hit this level of customer satisfaction. We're going to hit this level of uh you know, of uh, margin. We're going to hit this level of new customers. We're going to hit this whatever it is, on-time deliveries. What? Sometimes you got to be a pig-headed. And, you know, people think, you're crazy. You're nuts. You're irrational. So what? You know, that's, that's our goal. That's what we're going to do. It's like when you played sports back in high school. And you remember when you got done and you're running laps and then you're done and you're exhausted and you're at the end of the practice and you fall down the ground and you think you're, you're, you're breathing, you're wheezing, and the coach says, get back up and run another lap. Right? Remember that? Yeah. And you know what? You didn't die. You know what? <laughs> you didn't die, and you're still here, and you're able to do it. That's what I'm talking about. 
And that's what business leaders have to do every single day. And and I, fir- I first heard this when I was doing a show for my show on Bloomberg, uh, The C-Suite with Jeffrey Hazlett. And I'm doing this show um, in San Diego interviewing a company. Uh, Greg Lucier is the chairman of a company called uh, Life Technologies. They're about a $3 billion company. They've done a roll-up, about 40 companies rolled up. They're doing mapping of bio uh, genomes. Mm-hmm. And... Um, they were about to sell to Thermo Fisher. So I was in there, you know, going through with them on the sale and so forth. And he spoke to a group of Harvard MBAs. And while he was speaking to these Harvard MBAs, he actually put a slide up and says, you know, leaders must be irrational. And I thought, that's crazy. That's nuts. And I wrote it down because we were doing B-roll, which is filming other outside shots and mm-hmm. not really covering what it was, just having me there and getting us on camera, mm-hmm. doing some of that stuff that you, you do the filler mm-hmm. uh, with the rest of the show. And so I wrote down Irrational. I put an exclamation point, underlined it, circled it. And I said, man, I'm going to drill him when I see him. Because how can a publicly traded company be irrational? How can a leader of a publicly traded company be irrational? We've got stock in their biotech company. This is crazy. And then he said, you know, sometimes a leader... We say we're going to go from point A to point B, mm-hmm. but we really have to tell we're going to C. So we can get up ready to be where we really need to be. And I went, oh, that makes a lot of sense. So now I understand why bosses are sometimes called crazy. Now, some are legitimately crazy. Let's get that right, you know. But, you know, what I'm talking about is it's up to a leader to think big and act bigger, to stretch it a little bit, to make us, you know, give us a little bit more tension. And tension's a good thing. There's a saying in sports, I'm sure you know this well, no pain, no... Right, no gain. Yeah, exactly. So why don't we have tension in business? That's what we're supposed to be doing. So, yeah, you need to be a little irrational. <laughs> so. You know, it's a great quote by Thomas Edison, or about Thomas Edison, about mm-hmm. failure, you know, getting yes. back to failure. Yes. Somebody said, hey, you failed to make the light bulb 10,000 times. He said, no, I found 10,000 diff- 10, different right. ways to make the to right make light bulb. It. That's right. And I thought that was a That's great right. quote. Yeah. And even the quote, what was the one he had after his place burned down? He had a terrible fire, and most of his things he's working on his patents all went lost. There is great value in disaster. All our mistakes are burned up. Thank God we can start anew. Mm. That's a positive attitude right there. That's a, yeah. that's a smart guy. Like yeah. no, we no one died, right? I got no the, one you know, died. We burned some stuff up. It's just stuff. Well, let's go do it right. Yeah, I love that. By the way, I love the name of this show. Thank Mind you. Mind your business. I Thank mean, because that's what you got to do. There's nobody responsible for the success of your business except for the person that stares back at you in the mirror. That's it. so you got to okay. mind your business. You got to take care of your business. That's very important. I, I love the name. Thank you. In in keeping with the idea of, of of positioning a brand, a business, a product to stand out from the rest of the crowd. Any tips on that? How important is that? It's very important. Here you got to be you. So first of all, it's got to be real. Let me give you a, a great. You know, first of all, brand is not a logo. It's not a color. It's not the attributes of the brand. It is the brand. What is a brand? First of all, a brand is something we always put on a, a cow and occasionally a horse. That's where the word brand came from. From cowboys like me out in the West, and we turn our cattle loose and we bring them together. That's what we do. So it's it comes from that word. Now it's been attributed to businesses. So a for a business. It either means the identification of ownership on the side of a bovine, which I don't think most businesses want, or it means a promise delivered. And so you better focus really on your promise. When you think about Apple, you think about great companies, what is their promise that they deliver? And that's the core of who they are. And that's what you got to get to in your brand. Amazing. Jeffrey, as a CMO of a former Fortune 100 company, could you share your top three marketing tips for our audience? Uh, First of all, do it. That'd be the first one. Just do something, whatever it is, and if it doesn't do it. Second is um, really get as close as you possibly can to your customers. So go to where they're at. This is the old Sam Kennison, the comedian rule, where you know he used to talk about people who were starving in a desert. When you live in the desert, move to where the food is. Food doesn't grow in sand. So go to where your customers are and be there. So if that means they're on social media, get on social media. If that means they're in this place or that place, make sure you go and do those things. And the third thing is, is just be real. You know, be real about what you do, you know, and and deliver it. You know, be that brand promise. That's the most important thing you can do. Hmm. You talk in the book about uh, being the guest judge on Celebrity Apprentice with Donald Trump. Most people would not even attempt such a thing. What, what, what got into you? Well, you know, I was I was I had a product at Kodak, which I was trying to, to really highlight. And in that product, I needed a way in which to showcase the product. And one of the best things I always thought was the Apprentice show. So I told the team, let's get it on The Apprentice. And they said, well, we're not sure how to do that. I said, we'll call Donald Trump. And they said, well, we can't do that. I said, call Donald Trump. So I picked up the phone, dialed 411, got New York, and I said, hey, I like Donald Trump's number. And they said, we don't have a Trump. We have a, a Trump organization. 
And I said, okay, give me that number. And I, they gave me that number. And I, I the, the receptionist answered. I said, I can I speak to Donald Trump? He's not available. I said, can I speak to his assistant? They gave me his assistant. And then she said he's not available. So then I left him a message. And my message was really good. My message was, hey, look, I got a couple million dollars I need to spend in the next half hour. If Mr. Trump can't call me back in the next half hour, I understand. I'll pass and go spend it with somebody else. Is that the message you left? Absolutely. I'm I mean, not, I, tr- I believe you. No, that's the exact message. Unreal. I, you have to be very good at being clear about the ask, right? And I knew the things that would trigger him. He wants money, and he doesn't like to lose. I gave him both options, and I put a time limit on it to make sure he called me. Well, within 15 minutes, he called me back. Unreal. That's how you do it. Well, we have 60 seconds left to the show. You're tuned to an amazing show of uh, real great business advice. If you missed it, you can go to the podcast, wabcbizradio.com. Any final thoughts for our? We got to do this again. We're going to have to come back. I, I absolutely. I'm, so hey, you, use the book. Use yeah. the book. Mind your business. That's the most important thing. You take care of your business. We want to make sure that you see that, and that's what you got to do. Think big, act bigger. It is not the lucky who win. It's the relentless. So go be relentless every day. Seventy-seven WABC Radio presents Mind Your Business, hosted by founder and president of Bottom Line Marketing Group Yitzhak Saflis. Mind Your Business focuses on business and marketing strategies for success. 